Greetings from the Canadian Sleep Consultants. First, let me commend you for taking the first steps towards better sleep. At this point, your sleep specialists have ordered an at-home sleep study. Let me walk you through it. For this particular sleep study, these are the sensors and recorders that is involved. Here, you will see the main recorder. You will also have belts in your chest and in your belly. You will have finger sensors, which comes in three different types. And lastly, the nasal cannula, which will be placed on your nostrils. We will also be provided with a sleep log for you to record the night of the sleep study. The first step is to put on the main recorder around your trunk. You can see that there are buttons here. The main recorder is pre-programmed to start on the schedule you have provided the sleep technologist. It will start and stop automatically, and you don't have to worry about pressing any buttons here. This needs to be placed around your trunk in the midsection. It comes with a stretchable belt that is fastened by Velcro, and you can just easily unfasten it. Place it around your mid trunk like so. The recorder, as you can see, is facing forward. There are ports on the side and on top of it. Okay. For ladies, you can just place the recorder just below the bust line. Now once the recorder is in place, the next step would be to attach the different sensors. The first one would be the chest sensor. It is color coded blue. And it comes with an easy snap on snap off buckle. This sensor will be placed around your chest. like so. It also comes with a Velcro adjustment and I would like you to adjust it in such a way that it's not loose. This sensor will be recording your chest excursion when you're breathing in, breathing out. The other part of the sensor is the one that is attached to the main recorder. It is also color-coded blue. And on the side of the main recorder, there's a blue port. You can just easily slip it in, like so. Make sure that you're actually attaching it snugly so that it doesn't fall out of place easily, especially when you're tossing and turning. The same thing goes for the belly sensors. The belly sensor is color-coded yellow, and it's labeled abdomen. It also comes with an easy snap-on, snap-off buckle. It's wrapped around your belly, like so, preferably on the level of the belly button. It also comes with the same Velcro adjustment, and you could just adjust for the right fit. The main thing to remember for the chest and the belly sensors is they shouldn't be loose so that they can properly monitor your chest and your belly excursions when you're breathing in, breathing out. Now, same thing goes for the belly sensors. It's color-coded yellow, and the point of attachment is on the side of the recorder on the yellow port, and just slip it in place. Now the rest of the wires, you can just tuck them, let's say underneath the sensors so that they're not all over the place. The next one would be the nose sensor. This nasal cannula here is the same cannula we use with oxygen supplementation. However, in this particular test, it's not doing that. This is to monitor the flow of air in your upper airway when you're breathing in, breathing out. 
As you can see, the prongs here uh, has a certain curve. This needs to be placed into your nostrils with a curve pointing inward. So to put this on, the prongs goes into your nostrils, while the rest of the tubings goes up and over your ears, and it loops around your chin, like so. There's also a slider here, which you can tighten, so that it's more stable and it stays in place. You can also put tape over the tubings so that it's more stable in place. Also tell us if you have a certain sensitivity to tape. We may have to provide you with a different kind of tape or you may not have to tape at all. The nasal sensor needs to be attached to the main recorder as well. The other point is attached to the main recorder on the top part on this port here. It's actually screwed in place. You just have to twist it and make sure that it's tight and it should be good. Lastly, you will have the finger sensors. For the finger sensors, as you can see, there's three types. There's one that comes with an easy slip on, slip off uh, rubber. There's one type that is clipped into your finger, like this one. And there's one that needs to be wrapped around an adhesive tape. For these two sensors, it's straightforward. So for the slip-on rubber sensor, just slip your finger into it with the tip of the finger touching the end of the sensor inside. The wires are on top. You can just loop the wire around your wrist like so. And actually, I would ask you to place a tape on top of that. This would make the wire stable in place. Now, the other end of the sensor. The point of attachment of the finger sensor is on the top part of the recorder. And it's labeled SpO2 for partial pressure of oxygen. Now for this part here, you can just clip it on to the Velcro belt. So in summary, you will have the main recorder around your mid trunk. You will have the chest sensor and the belly sensor, the nose sensor, and lastly the finger sensor, all attached to the main recorder. Now for some final reminders. We would ask you to return the recorder the following day, preferably in the morning, as there are other patients that are in line for the recorder as well, and we need some time to sanitize them. For this particular test, we need at least six hours of recording that you're actually sleeping. It doesn't need to be continuous. As long as we have a total of at least six hours, that would be fine. It would give us adequate data to analyze. When you're doing the sleep study and you're waking up, and let's say you need to go to the washroom, you don't have to detach all this and reattach them again later on. Just take it with you. Also, if you woke up and it took you more than half an hour to fall back to sleep, kindly tell us how long did it take you to fall back to sleep. This way, we can properly correlate your awakenings with the recorded data. If you are taking sleep-inducing medications, we would ask you to have this sleep study set up first before taking the medication. That way, the drowsiness that may kick in before you have finally set this all up is less likely. If there are steps that are unclear, you may rewatch this video. When you return the sleep recorder, the sleep technologist would download the data from the sleep recorder and see if we have enough data to analyze. Sometimes we may need to repeat the sleep study if there are certain parts of the sleep recording that is actually inadequate. Let's say, for example, if the finger sensors fell off or got disconnected, or if other sensors are not recording properly and we cannot correlate them accordingly. In that instance, the sleep technologist will call you or inform you that we need to do a repeat. 
and we may have to set this in another time or you can just take the recorder back home with you depending on the availability of the sleep recorder. Thank you for choosing Canadian Sleep Consultants.